Hey hey internet, Swag here. Welcome back to another CV2 Demystified. Last time, we talked about executions. Now if you're not sure what that is, or you're completely new to CV2, please go watch that other video first, link in the description. If you're ready to learn more though, this tutorial is here to tell you all about the basics of booleans. The boolean is the red value in CV2, and it can be either true or false. It is an easy value to understand, because it has only two states, and very useful because it controls the if chip, and its condition can also be made more complex with chips like the end chip or chip and not chip. So, without further ado, let's get on it. Boolean outputs are often phrased as a true or false statement. Using the toggle button as an example, the red boolean output labeled is pressed can be either true or false. Is pressed equals true if the button is pressed, and vice versa when not pressed. The less than equals and greater than chip do something very similar, where you can give two number inputs and the chip will check if the statement you provided is true or false. Other useful chip with boolean outputs include the player has role chip that can take a player value and output whether the player has any role with the name specified by the value input. The rec room object has tag which does something very similar but for objects instead of players and tags instead of roles. And the rec room object get last equipping player which has a very useful boolean output to see if the specified rec room object is currently held or not. The first reason that a boolean value is so important is because it is the cornerstone of programming. At the very very beginning, any computation starts with a bit, a 1 or a 0. The other reason, however, is the if chip. The if chip is one of the only chips that can direct an execution in different directions and it works off of the boolean value. When given an execution, it will output that execution from the then pin if the input boolean value is true and from the else pin if the input boolean value is false. To demonstrate its function, this toggle button has the toggle buttons is pressed boolean output wired into the if chip. Therefore, when button is pressed is not true, the if chip will direct the execution out from the else output and, because it is not connected to anything, it is discarded. If the toggle button is pressed, however, toggle button is pressed now equals true, the execution is output from the then pin and our emitter will now respond because it gets an execution to its start input. Just as the toggle button switches from on to off or vice versa with a single click, the boolean allows us to set up our own toggle setups. Here we are using a player has role for a boolean and when player has role is not true, we add set role. Player has role is now true, so the next time we press the button, the if chip sends the execution from the top pin, which hits the remove role chip. Now sometimes you might have the need for more than just a single boolean condition. Maybe you want two true values as a condition, one or the other, or maybe you need exactly the opposite instead. That's why these chips come in handy, and they come in handy indeed. The NOT chip takes a value and inverts it. True becomes false, and false becomes true. The OR chip allows two inputs. If either the top input or the bottom input are true, it will output a true value. Useful if there's multiple boolean conditions that can activate your system. This chip can be configured to add extra inputs and when done so, any input getting a true input will make the output true. AND chip allows two inputs that both need to be true for the output to be true. Great for when your system has multiple conditions that you all want to be true before activating. 
can also be configured for extra inputs, and when done so, every input needs a true value for the output to be true. The NOR and NAND chip act the same as the AND and OR chip if their output is run through a NOT chip as well. To demonstrate the power of the AND chip, here we have a little setup that you could use for a puzzle room, for example. Let's pretend for a second that there's two tasks that need to be completed for this emitter to explode. One is to press the button, the other task grants you a roll. Because we've used the AND chip and both the button is pressed and the player has roll have to be true, just having the roll or just having the button pressed will do you no good. It is only when the roll is true and the button is pressed that the emitter fires, signaling our success. Now can you tell me the difference in this build? That's right, it emits fireworks instead of explosions. But it also has an OR chip instead of an AND chip. Imagine with me, once more, for a second, you made yourself a free roam PvP and you only want admins to have access to certain functions, maybe something like opening and closing gates or bridges. Other times, however, you're fine with your players having the run of the place, so you want an override. This is where we use an OR chip. If I am admin, I can always press this button and get a response. If I am not admin and the override is not active, it will do nothing. If we activate the override though, this fulfills one of our true conditions in our OR chip and the system will always respond whether I am admin or not. You are now armed with all the information to make basic boolean gates and logic. Just remember, if you ever have any doubts about how the boolean works, just try and make a statement out of it. I hope you stay tuned for the next in-depth tutorial that will go over variables, which are the safe states of CV2. Please leave a comment on what you'd like to see covered next, join up with the creative club in game for all kinds of cool events to learn and improve at the make pen, and I hope to see you in the next one. But above all else, use your newfound knowledge wisely. Bye!